use almost, I'm exclusively in the Photoshop elements camp, mm. but you know, I outsource some of my stuff. Um, Adam Gabala is my designer and I, I leverage him for the, for the higher end stuff that I, I need done. But um, I always think it's great to, to utilize a bunch of different tools because it gives your designs a slightly different look and feel and tone and texture. And when you're building out a kind of a robust, diverse catalog, you need that diversification of appearance. There's still value in those ads. I find myself these days looking more and more at advertisements to see what fonts are they using? What type of product is it? Are they targeting a male audience, a female audience? If so, what types of fonts and color schemes are they using to, to reach me as a potential buyer? So all of a sudden, ads are relevant in my life, and I, I, I welcome them now because I tend to learn something from them. I would say look at ten, page 10 and lower of Google search results for, for blogs within uh, a, a niche you're, you're targeting. I mean, you could, you could go on Google and do a search for the top 10 new hobbies or interests of, of 2018. And then you'll probably find a few oddball hobbies or lifestyle trends and you'll be like, wow, that looks cool. But then if you go ahead and you Google those things, the first few pages, that's what everybody's looking at. You won't really find the the niche blogs and you won't be able to really drill down further into those hobbies until much later in Google search results. So that to me is a way to find these little upstart blogs and websites and even newsletters and other online resources where you can hear from experts, people who are living those lifestyle trends, people who are actively engaged in those hobbies. Because the first few pages of Google are, uh, search results on an offbeat hobby would be, you know, like People Magazine covering that hobby. Well, that's that's going to give you some surface level information. So maybe you'll have a working knowledge of what that hobby is, but you still won't have an insider's perspective. And you need an insider's perspective if you're going to make apparel for insiders. So also Facebook groups are wonderful. Um, don't be turned off by a Facebook group in a particular interest if it only has 500 people in it. That's more than enough, as long as those 500 people know what they're talking about. Join the group, be honest about why you're there, you wanna learn more about it, you're in the apparel industry or you're blogging about it, whatever it is, um, and invite those people to share their knowledge with you and, and you can make shirts for them. Because chances are, if it's a micro niche for a, a health food trend, for example, those people are very passionate about it and they won't mind that you're there to learn more to make products because they probably want the word to be spread about whatever it is that they're doing. And maybe it could open the door for a partnership opportunity as well. You never know. But you know, in addition to the micro niches that are already out there, new ones are coming into being all the time. How do you find those? Do a little bit of online research. Look at uh, DVDs and books that are um, in the works. You know, like even on Amazon, you can see what's available for pre-order now. Uh, books and DVDs that'll be out even this summer. And so many of them aren't just the new, uh, you know, mystery novel or, or James Patterson book or something. It's a lot of them are health, fitness, um, financial advice, self-help, just the broad self-help um, genre. And within that, you can kind of see where the marketplace may be headed because a good number of those products will be based on ideas and themes and concepts that aren't presently uh, oversaturated. So it's a good way to see what's on the horizon, and most people don't do that. What, um, if my mind asks, what what heritage are you? Or do you come from? I'm primarily Italian. Okay, I'm Italian with a little bit of Hungarian. Okay. And have you made any shirts that are Italian or Hungarian? Yes. Yes. I've done uh, mostly Italian. Italian shirts sell better than Hungarian shirts. <laughs> um, nothing can touch uh, come anywhere near um, Puerto Rican pride related shirts. Greek is even leading, at least for, for my account, my sales account. Um, uh, Greek shirts are, are leading Italian shirts, but it's a very Mediterranean feel to them. Um, but yeah, I've done, done okay with the uh, Italian shirts, and I've, I've certainly made a lot of them. And I've gone beyond the obvious, you know, like the Italian food or the Italian cooking niche. That's, that's a little bit um, uh, crowded and, and congested at this point. But I like to do the, you know, the crossover niches where you could take a, a, a hobby, go back to hobbies again, go back to a hobby, and, you know, you're the best Italian blank. 
hobbyist. Um, you can really bring your cultural pride or ethnicity and, and put it into so many other things that really personalizes a piece of apparel for the wearer. And um, it might seem simplistic, but it's, it's a consistently bankable approach to designing shirts on Merch by Amazon. So really, if you're really hardcore into the, uh, the culture of, an, of a nation or a nationality, um, you, you, should, you should look into the different parts of the country and, and everything from accents that are more indigenous to perhaps the southern part of a country as opposed to the northern. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are opportunities in there for, um, for, for t-shirt creation that will really target buyers in a way that, um, that's been lacking in the online uh, e-commerce world. So that's one of those things where I don't think you need to try and reinvent the wheel. I mean, I think social media is your friend in that case. I think uh, I think you have to look at, uh, at what's what's moving on Twitter, what's trending, what's what are people on Facebook talking about, what are your friends and family talking about, what season are you in, what's what's hot right now. And I think also that doesn't necessarily mean if if you know with May coming, you have to do Mother's Day or you have to do Cinco de Mayo. You can um, you can look at. Family barbecue shirts for Memorial Day. You can look at uh, finding a unique way to approach graduation, um, perhaps in line with you know uh, nationalities. Uh, you know, you can you can put a unique spin on things that are seasonal that have a chance to hit soon and at least get you ten sales. Because once you get ten sales, you can start to to really snowball quickly. And right now, Amazon is I'm I'm seeing every day people post that. Uh, I just got approved for an account last week or a couple weeks ago. I've only sold a couple shirts, but I just got tiered up to 100. And yeah. I think part of the reason we're seeing that, and I, it, it pains me to see this, but I know a lot of people who used to upload regularly are either giving up on merch altogether or they're taking a protracted break from it because they're not seeing the numbers that, that they're hoping to see or feel that they are, are deserving. <laughs>